to travel on gold 25. I think we got an extra step there. That's a good call. One thing to be careful of though when you call that, as you turn you call an offensive foul, you actually turn your back to those players. And when you do that, you don't you lose sight of your player. So if something should happen, you've had no eyes on them. So be careful. See if you can find a way to open up your play and actually do your offensive foul the opposite way so that you can still keep your players in front of you. That's a good verticality play. Gold initiates all the contact on black. Black stays legal and jumps. It's a good play. That's a foul. White one uses his lower extremities to, to uh, uh, reroute the offensive player. That's an RSBQ play that we've got to take. I think we had another travel there on black one. Hands. Chippy. And what they're chippy about is that they're asking for fouls on, uh, on 
and RSPQ plays in transition. They think that uh, gold is riding them um, as they come up. And I'm not sure it's tough to see from our angles over here, but I do know what's tough is that we haven't taken those fouls early in the game, so it's going to be tough for us to try and take them in the end of this game. Now, as we look back on this film, we can see if there was opportunities to take those types of fouls early so that we wouldn't have to try and deal with it late. Those are things that you want to look at the film at when you get a chance. take a look at that one it's I know that we've called offensive all so you're probably thinking of ways to be consistent but I think that that play is an is a block as he is not legal he's not an LGP or legal guarding uh, position when he takes the takes the contact the answer to this but on any type of three seconds the question you have to ask yourself is did we try and be preventative as an official and try and get them out of the lane if the answer is yes to that then it's a great call if we just waited and counted one two three and didn't say anything then sometimes it's better to be proactive but you'll get to answer that question good So these are good fouls, and I, and I agree that that's a foul. But what's happened now is that we've allowed that to go and occur for the last 18 minutes and 45 seconds or thereabouts. And now we take fouls with about a minute 15 left. It's tough for us to give credibility to our calls because we haven't been consistent with that call throughout the entire half. Again, I do like that call. I think that you need to look at the tape and go back and see, is there more opportunities for us to call those types of hand checks, forearms, or RSBQ plays um, early on? Side, Paul, make sure that you're in good position. With a minute left, we want to be in good position before we put any kind of ball into play.
you call an and one on that play? Who shot those free throws? So this is typical intramural basketball right now. Obviously we're clubs with these two teams. But one thing to think about is we get so aggressive because we haven't we've allowed them to be to be aggressive throughout the game. So what happens is now the fouls become so much more escalated that we get ourselves into into trouble. So really look at the second half and, and go back and Say, all right, could I take a foul here and try and use them as game management opportunities? never control how hard a foul is but I do uh, I'm kind of going back to it again philosophy wise is have we called fouls aggressive fouls consistently throughout the first second half would that foul be as aggressive if we had and I don't know the answer to that but I just want to put a bug in everyone's ear serve something oh we got a trainer over there is there a trainer do you have a bloody nose so now we take a timeout 